Welcome, welcome, everyone. Welcome to the stream. I'm seeing that we see my microphone here. Let me move it. Okay, I hope everyone can hear me well. I have some issue of connection right now. I'm seeing it on my software. So I hope everything will be all right, that you will be able to see me stitching properly and that the quality will be all right. Also, the fact that I have a connection delay, I might see the comments in delay. But so don't worry if I answer a bit late, it's because I think we have, we might have a delay between you and me during the connection. But anyway, welcome everyone. It's been a while that we didn't do a live publicly. We usually do it for our members. I'm very happy to have you here. And today we're gonna basically discuss together if you want to obviously if you want to ask some question or discuss on the live chat that you have uh, in your youtube so if you have an account you can easily uh, put a comment a chat and i will be able to answer to you and stitch so here is um, a big artwork that i am doing hi patricia uh, and it will be basically uh, some weeks ago, I had a workshop of how to do abstract embroidery in a Van Gogh style. You know that I love this style. It's something I do since a very long time. I think since almost the beginning of my embroidery journey, where I do the sky in a Van Gogh inspiration. And I decided now with time and age, I will say I'm more and more drawn to abstraction and I really like it and also to do an artwork where I start, but I don't know how it will look, how basically will be the end result. I'm just going with the flow. Um, yeah, each thread will lead me somewhere where I don't actually know. And I wanted to bring you to this journey now. So I will not teach you how to do it today, really. Uh, if you want to know how to do it, we have a workshop on it that I did uh, for our academy, Charles and Elin Academy. I will talk about it a bit later, obviously. But for now, yeah, I will just teach. Obviously, I will explain you my process, how I, how I do. And if you have any question, I will be very happy to answer to it. So this is the beginning. As you can see, sorry, I had, it was actually quite difficult to find a good angle to um, let me just focus yeah I think it's all right to find a good angle with my camera to put it because it's quite it's quite massive and as you can see here I still have much more to do so I use a big hoop to uh, do it I think this is a kilt hoop I'm not sure but yeah I still have much more space to do so this is really the beginning it will be big and the goal is to put it um, as a canvas after um, yeah I started to want to make a video of this one and I uh, basically taped it on my roof. Like you can see the roof here, they are like, yeah, like a roof triangle. And um, I tried to tape it to be able to take a time lapse for you to see, but it's, it takes me too much time. So I went back to my old good, uh, old and good uh, way of having a hoop. It's so much better. So I was doing right now the, actually the circle here. Hello, Lor Lorale, if I say it, Lorale, I think it is. Welcome here. So let me do it with two, two hands. It will be maybe better. I'm just afraid to actually um, eat the microphone here, but I think it will be all right. So yeah, I was doing the circle here. Uh, basically how I started, I always start from a shape, a circle, so it depends. Um, on this piece, I did several circles and then I connect it together. And basically, I will play with the colors, with the shades, the contrast and so on to make it, I will say, harmonious. And that it looks good, yeah, basically. Hope everyone can hear me well and can see it well. I would love if you could confirm me in the chat if everything is okay. I couldn't put some music because uh, last time I did, actually on the live stream, 
when you put during a stream, like you can have some copyright issues. So, and I don't know how to put my microphone and my music in the same time without uh, uh, issues because I do have uh, good music that are good in terms of copyright. Sounds and view are great. Okay, great. But uh, I don't know how to put it in the same time. So it will just be the sounds of my voice and of the stitches, if you can hear it, which I'm not sure though, with a microphone. So also my look, the goal of uh, all good, all good, everything's great, everything's good. Okay, it's perfect. Also, this stream has a goal to show that it takes me time. <laughs> These things takes a lot of time. Uh, I, I don't know since when you are following me, but uh, I used to post much more before, some years ago, because uh, I was producing a lot of embroidery, but now that I have um, ambitions of doing bigger piece and also life comes into it uh, to uh, be a dad and we have a family to all these things. Of course, we have a bit less time, but um, the main reason why I post less is because I do pieces, artwork, sorry, that uh, basically takes me much more time to do. So I can't, I, I decided that it's okay if I post less on Instagram. Hello, Jessica. Hello, Carmen. Hello, Jude. Great. So here I will have a bit more issue to stitch because under is my desk. It was very difficult to, to find a way to put the camera correctly because usually I have my stand, my embroidery stand, because I do much smaller work while I do stream or I record the course. <laughs> but here, yeah, I had to put my camera, basically, the tripod is on my table. It's a bit, how to say, not very safe, but uh, I think it will do the job. Yes, thank you. Eileen is in the chat also for putting, putting the links where you can find the workshop. So we have an exciting news, actually, I wanted to share to you guys. Um, we just launched our community feed or our forum or our social media. I don't know how we can call this. I w let me let me put you in context. So, with time, we got a bit, yeah, overwhelmed. We will say, with social media, we love it. It's thanks to that that we are living. But we wanted to find a way to be more connected to you in different ways. So there are several ways of being more connected to you, such as the live streams, uh, sometimes answering to messages and, and stuff like that. But the main thing that we wanted is to basically share our process pictures and yeah, share our ideas uh, in a more private way because, you know, now on Instagram, it, it's difficult in different social media to actually reach uh, your followers in a more private way. So yeah, we were basically discussing and brainstorming of how we should do that. Uh, we started with the Facebook community, but we noticed and we also had different emails of um, you basically um, saying that you use less and less Facebook, which we understand we, we do too. So we decided for our academy, Charles and Ellen Academy, which is a membership, basically, we can call it a private community where you have access to several different courses that we made about embroidery, creativity, creating your design, and so on. We decided that we wanted to add a value to this membership. And that's where we got the idea to basically create a small social media that is only dedicated to Charles and Ellen Academy, where basically we are sharing ideas all together. We presenting each other, all this stuff, you know, we can discuss, comment. It's basically work exactly like a social media where we can like and comment others post. I think soon we will make also a chat, stuff like that. And basically we can discuss um, our projects on embroidery, maybe if you need help with um, with the courses, stuff like that. 
So I just wanted to let you know that we just launched that. It's only accessible to our members of the Academy. But we thought that it would be also a good reason for you to, to stay with us because we could um, yeah, create a nice community vibe and hopefully share uh, our passions together, which is embroidery, but mostly creativity, you know, a creative lifestyle, an art lifestyle. So yeah, if you want to have more information about that, I just invite you to look at the link in my description where it's Charles Enelin Academy. But other than that, I will not um, bother you too much about it. I just wanted to let you know about the update about us. So as you can see already, I'm uh, going a bit through the, the colors. Um, the reason is because I didn't finish my thread, but my idea at first is I started to do basically the circle, as you can see here, with some line to have an idea of where my move movements of the thread will go. I'm feeling it a first layer. So as you can see, yellow, a type of blue, another type of blue, purple, and so on. The reason I'm doing that is to feel a bit this feeling of accomplishment. Because I, I could technically just do this part first, where I put the yellow and maybe I don't know yet what I will put, but some complementary colors and so on. And yeah, I could do that step by step, but it will feel a bit long. I don't know how to explain. If I just do one small part, one small part here, it will just feel a bit, oh, it, it's never ending. So my, my that's how I do at least, is to do the base first, and then I will implement with the details, the complementary, the adding colors and stuff like that. So I literally have no idea how, how it will look in the end. I'm pretty excited. Uh, now I think it's time for me to to scale the size of uh, my artworks because I really enjoy also this um, yeah, bigger works to do actually. Simply as that. I have signed up for the forum and it's great so far. I love that it is its own thing. Can Facebook can be very distracting and less intentional. Exactly. I'm glad you joined. Um, I'm very happy. It's really the beginning. So obviously we are not uh, yet a lot, but it doesn't matter. Like we don't want, uh, the goal is not the number numbers. It's uh, the goal is to yeah, share each other in a space where it just feel not intrusive and we, we show up when we want, we share things as, yeah, I mean, myself, I, I deleted Facebook. Um, I'm, I'm not interested with it. I, I kept uh, the messenger chat because obviously for friends as we can do that, but the profile of Facebook, I'm not interested with it. It does actually slow down my creativity. So yeah. That's exactly, I, thi I think we thought it was uh, the next step to do, at least, to also uh, encourage, because we, we do want to take some time a step back to social media to be more present. Uh, so we wanted also to show you a good example with uh, alternative ideas to make it in a good way. Hope that makes sense. Oh yeah. I'm looking at the screen, I'm doing bad. Um. So I don't know how is the weather for you, but for us, it has been warm. It's still warm. <laughs> it's been a month and a half that we have 40, 40 degrees, 35, between 35 and 40 Fahrenheit degrees, which I think is 105. Uh, Fahrenheit, something like that. Hi Charles, how many strands are you using and upon how long are your stitches? So I'll show you now because I will do a new part, which I will do I think here as it's the simpler. So for this, 
I tried many times, many strands. Uh, it depends. If I was lazy, I would have done six strands. But for this part, uh, I'm doing three because three is a good thickness. It has to, to basically be a thickness that feels right for, to, for you. As I will put several colors that will blend each other. It's um, I, I, and I let also a bit space. I still wanted to make this effect that in the end it will be like a lot of movement, you know, a bit, um, how to say, um, an illusion, you know. So I, I wanted to keep it thin enough, but not too thin that it doesn't take me too much time. So I'm using three strands. Sorry, you can't show here. Uh, I can't show you here. I'm using three strands. I just take off each strand. Um, uniquely to avoid that after my uh, my thread is uh, twisting. So I'm using three strands and then my f my length of the stitch really depends. But you see, I'm trying to keep an harmonious, I don't know, I will say one centimeter, but it can be more, it can be less, it really depends. One thing I can tell you is that when you want to do a curve or a shape in any form, the smaller, the better, because you will be able to, for the round shapes, you know, to really make it like um, a real movement, a curvy movement, you know. So that's what I would advise to not do it too long, because then it gets very, um, yeah, a bit, it, it will not work, you know, if I, like, uh, even here, I think it's a bit too long. I would advise you to well, really find a good balance, but I think around one centimeter is, is something pretty good. Hope that answered the question. And uh, yeah, my, my, the length of my threads are way too much, way too long. <laughs> I know it's not the way to go. Uh, Aileen, when she taught me embroidery, told me that I should avoid to do that because it does not in the end, I never followed the suggestion. I did a lot of knots. I suppose now with uh, with uh, experience, I'm more used to it. But um, so I'm not doing knots as much, except when I'm, I'm on a stream. Usually, I get more nervous. So we'll see. But uh, yeah, it's just because I don't like to cut and knot every time. You know, I just like to advance. So. I'm doing very long threads. Yes, perfect. Thank you. No problem. If you have any question, feel free to to do it. So I'm using a dark fabric. Oh, today's my birthday and I asked for your book. I flipped through it and the patterns are awesome. I'm so excited and to more of them. Uh, ah, to try more of them. But first, Michelle, happy birthday. I hope you have a, an amazing day. I'm really happy that uh, your gift was uh, our book. I hope you will find uh, you will find uh, patterns and that you will like. And please send us, uh, share us. We love to see how you interpret our, our patterns because the, f the, f the fun thing about it the, what we do is that each pattern that we do, like each of everyone that you guys are stitching are so different. It's, um, it's fascinating. So happy birthday again. Hola Dorio Janeiro. Hola, hola. I'm not, so I'm not talking, I, I don't talk uh, Brazilian Portuguese, but I think I understand. Uh, so thank you. <laughs> I think I, I think it's quite similar to, I mean, I, c I do read a bit um, Spanish, so I think I can, I think sh you say that you like my work, so thank you again. And Michel, if you want for the book, even if you got it as a paper book, I know it might be tricky for you to print the, um, the patterns. So if you send me an email at charles at charlesandelin.com, you I can send you the PDFs. It will be easier for you to um, to print them. So just let me know. You can just uh, send me a mail 
and I'll send it to you. Hola, hola. I see that we have some uh, Brazilian here. That's cool. I think uh, it's really nice when we are all from different time zones and different place. It's really cool. So as you can see, I'm, I'm shifting between different blues. That's, that's the thing. And then the old magic basically will be complementary colors and that will pop in between each other. You can have a glimpse here, basically. Um, I do also some other touch of other colors. It really depends on the situation. I also make sure that I have a dominant colors and stuff like that, which will be blue, like always. I will remain you, thank you. Yeah, with pleasure. So my main color will be blue, will be different blues. And I make sure that I don't blend them too much together. That's the thing with this kind of work. You have to be very careful is um, to not um, to not blend uh, the main colors together because then after you don't see the different waves, the different movement, different shapes, whatever you, you want to call it. So that's where you have to be careful. And in a way, that's also why I'm doing the base of diff the different areas at first, and then I will do the details. Martin, I'm new to embroidery and I love your work. Hello from Mexico. Hola, hola. Thank you for joining. Well, I hope you will uh, you will uh, do some uh, nice embroidery that you can share. It's great that you are new. I hope you will love it. It's a bit addictive, I have to say. Sorry, I'm shifting between one hand and two hands simply because I have my desk here and I can't uh, really, uh, at this area, do uh, two hands. Also, I make sure, you see, because very quickly I could do like um, stitches that aligned perfectly together, but I don't want that. I wanted to make it... So I make sure that the stitch are a bit different. So yeah, like I was saying before, yeah, one centimeter, but sometimes I shift a bit the length just because I want to make something a bit genuine, a bit, yeah, where we feel maybe you have some mistakes or whatever you, you want to call that. But something a bit more, I would say like, like an abstract painting where, you know, the, the brush and, and the stroke, we say in English, the strokes are a bit spontaneous. It is it is much colder in Scotland. How do you decide which way to work your stitch? Yeah, I don't I, I really don't know how I know, but um, basically the fact that I start with uh, my circle shapes makes gives me a way, you know, and then I connect them together in uh, S shapes, basically, where I, I make sure that it's wavy, you know, and then I, I just do my areas like this, but I don't have uh, a real plan. I do have a plan when I'm doing, do I have it here? No, I don't have it here. Uh, not so long ago, I did a line art abstract, but the lines were very aligned together. So then I have a real, real plan. I'm, I'm drawing it in advance, but for this, I'm really not planning uh, anything. So uh, I'm going with the flow, seeing what what works, if it doesn't work. Like the, f the nice thing with a big artwork is, and also with embroidery is that you, you can think, you know, you have time to think, is it good, is it not? I would advise also, because as you have your eyes on it, like quite, you know, long for a long time. Sometimes you focus so much on a space that you forgot the whole thing. So I would advise to let your embroidery on the side or maybe on the table and then, you know, just stand up, zoom out a little and uh, look for the whole composition, you know, like blink your eyes to see it a bit blurry, just to see if 
the whole composition makes sense. I hope that makes sense what I'm saying. C'est vraiment beau. Merci Lisiane, merci. Have you decided about organizing a creative retreat? Yeah, we are thinking about it. Um, we are thinking about it. <laughs> it's just, you know, what's uh, right now wh where it becomes more complicated is uh, as the family is, uh, you know, our daughter is uh, full of energy and, um, and uh, yeah, like, you know, family life. So we are trying to, to really get uh, uh, an idea of where we would want to do that. But we, we think we want to do that in Montenegro. I will just turn, sorry. Because Montenegro is a nice uh, destination. Uh -huh. As I didn't do the knot before, it did twist. So you will see not a really nice back. We, were f we are actually thinking of doing retreats in Montenegro. The thing is, we just arrived in Montenegro five months ago now. And uh, we, we didn't really have time to actually like decide if we will do that in an hotel or, you know, something like that. But Montenegro seems a nice area to actually visit because a, a lot of different nationalities are coming here, either with cruises or, yeah, with themselves by flying and stuff. It seems to be a destination to visit. And in a way, it's a perfect um, small country with beautiful natures, beautiful um, architecture, where we could do a creative retreat for several days and um, yeah, stitch the environment, basically. So yeah, we're thinking about it, but we don't know exactly yet. For us right now has been quite a big move to go to Montenegro because um, we were living in Sweden. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of organization to do. Um, but we really wanted to do this move. And uh, but once we are more settled, I think, because we plan to stay, sorry for the noise of the microphone. We plan to stay for some years at least. So we'll definitely do that. What will be the final measurement of this design? Hmm, that's a good question. I think it will be at least on length. It will be a meter 20, a meter 30, something like that. I didn't uh, exactly do yet the measurement because as I will build my own canvas in the end, um, it really doesn't like, uh, I don't really mind, but I think it will be a meter and 30. It will be nice around nature. Yeah, it's uh, where we live is really nice. I mean, you are surrounded by mountains, but you have also the sea. We live on a bay. Um, also, the history of here is insane. I mean, it's crazy story. So we live in an area where basically Venetian from Italy came and a way long time ago, and they put their architecture style there. So the whole uh, town where we live looks like a little Venice, you know, it's really nice. So there, there are a lot of inspiration. You have a lot of hikes, a lot of things to visit, a lot of churches. Uh, yeah, you can basically do anything you want. If you want hikes, you can do it. If you want the mountain, you can do it. You want to just be on the beach, you can do it. You can be on the city, you can do it. So that's really this middle way. Uh, it's just like a bit Switzerland, you know, in the in the idea, just that instead of lakes, it's the sea, and um, it's more south. <laughs> so weather is a bit more warm. It's a really nice place. We really, really love it. And people are just amazing. So let me check. So you see the goal of here is that I want the, my move to my zone to make sense with the other circle. So let me think how I will proceed with that actually. 
So what I'm doing typically, I will trace like yes, yeah, some stitches to to know where will be nice. Um, I think I'll do like that. Okay, let me just go there and see. It, basically, my work will be a lot of observation and yeah, trying to join the points together. You know, it's a bit like a like a game. You will just like join, connect the dots. And hopefully it makes sense. But the nice thing, and this could be a thing for a creative retreat, definitely. That's what I found with uh, abstract embroidery to be amazing is that the fact that you don't have a design, which still when you have a design, for example, when I'm doing when I'm designing patterns for the monthly pro program for the academy, I think it's it's really nice to actually build something that you see and and then it becomes uh, an embroidery. But the w with abstract embroidery is also the fact that you have to be present because you don't know really how you are building your work, so you have to be attentive to that. You know, you have to have. A, really attention to your work so that makes you even more present and it's it's an amazing meditation obviously huh? it's um, I find it's and you know seeing all these colors and this line at some point I'm like Hoot, I'm a bit uh, hypnosed <laughs> so that's maybe that must be why I I do like it a creative retreat sounds amazing yeah we definitely it's been you know it's been years we want to uh, when we were living in Paris which now, I mean, it's it, it time flies, you know. Uh, we were doing live workshops where it was great. I mean, we were going to different cafes, but we had our friends also, uh, Blue Olive, in the uh, center of Paris, where we were doing mostly workshop here. And uh, yeah, you guys were coming and traveling to have a workshop with us, which was an amazing experience. And we want to, we want to do that again. But not for s just three hours workshop on a Saturday, you know. So, yeah, the goal was really to do um, a more long retreat. But then, yeah, family and then un unfortunately we got the pandemic also. So, I mean, it was not, not really easy to, to plan such things. But hopefully um, time will tell, you know. It is hard to go abstract as the need for a plan always distract me. And I end up wearing if it looks good to Messi. I really do like your design. Thank you. Well, which which then an idea that you could do is to just, you know, how I actually um, set my zones with my stitch. You could do that basically with sketching. Um, that's what I'm showing in the workshop of abstract embroidery in our academy is that you can plan i'm using my ipad in this example but you can just use um, papers it doesn't matter and you just sketch different ideas i will advise like 10 for example you know on on the small square and you don't need to take the whole paper for one idea and just sketch and see what makes sense and if you find a composition that works with different circles and all then you can just you know make it bigger with embroidery and you would uh, maybe take off this uh, anxiety of like looking at messy and stuff like that and then much more enjoyable i suppose it, uh, it's an idea at least um, that i can give you it's just me I, I really love to go with the flow it's true that with embroidery if you have a mistake the nice thing is that you can take off the thread but also it can be a problem because it can take you much more time but yeah, I mean, I like the um, I like this uh, system, but I'm I'm definitely a sketching guy too. I love to have an idea of uh, of what I'm doing sometimes, but for this one, I just thought I'll go with the flow. And uh, you see, I'm talking with you, and I wanted to go here to build my shape, my zone, I will say, and I missed it. Thank you. 
sorry that I'm going on the side <laughs> on the, the side of the screen. I'm not for long. Don't worry. So from here, I think I know what I'll do. Let's see if it will. Uh, Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yes, I think I know. So you see, I'm really doing my line like this. Oh, yeah. okay. Here we go. I will put a bit. And basically, yeah, I go zone by zone. So I trace it like this here. Mm -hmm. I don't mind if the line doesn't look perfect because when I will basically repeat, you know, like the, um, the, s the secret, quote unquote, huh? <laughs> The secret of that is that repetition makes the illusion. So it's like, it's like, uh, for example, if you like Sashiko, Eileen is doing a course about it, by the way, just saying. But with repetition, it creates, um, it creates the illusion, but it creates like really like um, this movement. So if here is not perfect, the fact that I will, um, repeat the stitch so many times with the current color, I will basically uh, get back my uh, my shapes. I, know, I hope it makes sense what I'm saying. Denis, hi Charles, so glad I made it and I'm very glad you made it. Welcome here. It's have nice to have you here. So, I'm soon out of thread so I have to change. I think this will be it. The most difficult, I will say, in this job is to basically that the movement doesn't get too broken unless it's uh, in purpose. Like here, I broke it in purpose. And in a way, I do that to separate and to yeah, uh, make a composition of itself. But for here, I want to make it smooth. So I will need to basically find a way for my threads to connect with each other. Okay, I will change threads because I have quite a big uh, needle, so it's... Um, Get that pretty quickly. Uh, on size of needles, if you want to know, I'm using one on five. I can let like this. Here we go. <laughs> so I'm taking off one by one, even if it's already free strands just for the simple fact of uh, first to not make a knot and yeah y apparently there is a problem you see <laughs> sometimes i miss that there is a, a knot or something so i just make sure that everything's good and to avoid also the threads to twitch twist too much okay i do have an issue here so i will just shift yeah. Okay. I do have some here. Thank you. This looks so good, but right now it looks like the hung back of Notre Dame. <laughs> Lol. Maybe, I don't know. You know, like the nice thing with abstraction is that you everyone can see something. And in a way that's make maybe what makes it uh, interesting, right? I don't know. I Hello, I am so happy to watch your free uh, stitch again. I missed the beginning though. Will you describe Will you describe your fabric? Is it velvet or maybe duck type clothes? Yes, of course I can um, 
I can describe you. Uh, it is so for you Europeans, it's called cotton canvas. It's basically a non-stretch uh, and uh, non-transparent fabric. And for Americans, yeah, it's a duck duck canvas. I think it's 0.7 O's. I think it is. It's uh, basically any any fabric works for us, but uh, for our type of uh, embroidery, we like non-stretch, very important, non-transparent. We usually do quite thick. But you know, when we go in the fabric, uh, fabric store, mostly when we are in Paris, uh, we always go to a fabric store. It's usually my wife asking for it. And uh, yeah, we just make sure it's quite thick, non-stretch, non-transparent. Um, because we did start some time uh, at the beginning with um, tr a bit transparent and uh, it's not really nice because uh, depending of where you put your embroidery in the end, the final embroidery, um, on the white wall or whatever, you can see through the, the lines of the background, which the, the threads on the background, which you don't want. So yeah, that's the rule. But duck canvas, 0.7 is the way to go. Uh, that's what we advised a lot to uh, our members, at least, who are in America. So I'll just show you how I will make sense of this zone. But you see, I try to be really uneven uh, with my uh, threads to not make it too mechanical. I want to keep this uh, a bit random style, but just to show that it's a bit like painting, you know. Sometimes there are some, not mistakes, you know, but you know what I mean. I think you understand my point. So the only thing uh, also that I tend to do, I notice when I do s embroider quite long time, which I did today, I did uh, embroider several hours already to uh, advance a bit to show you a bit of an idea of how um, it can look. You tend to do bigger stitch because uh, you want to go faster, but you know it's unconscious. So s when it comes like this, just, just take uh, a break basically. I hope I can keep it quite stable for you because I'm basically holding my hoop here as I don't have a stand for that big um, artwork. artwork. So <laughs> I got quite some criticize, I would say, uh, on Instagram, on my post that I'm using usually only one hand on embroidery because ob I mean a lot of people are much more experienced in terms of years of embroidery so I've been training my two hands you know skills but it's not easy you know <laughs> it's really not easy I'm uh, I'm not very good with my left hand but um, once you start it's actually okay it makes me gain a lot of time so It's impossible to visit a city, especially without visiting a fabric store. And you see, exactly, I told you it's my wife. See, <laughs> she, I've never been that much, and I'm Parisian, you know, and in Paris, if you went to Paris, you have the Sacred Heart Montmartre area. And as a Parisian, you know, like we, we do go there, but not too, too much because it's uh, very crowded many times. So. Um, it's normal, it's a beautiful place and it's a lot of tourism, um, but you don't tend to go too, too much. But since I met Eline, uh, I think I've never been that much, because there you have the area of the fabrics, which uh, I can totally advise if you go in Paris, it's, uh, it's uh, next to Abbes and then you have a Sacred Heart and uh, you go to the right side of the Sacred Heart when you look face to it. And you have basically only fabric shops. You have Tissuren, which is uh, the biggest and the, no, not the biggest. I don't think it's Tissuren, but whatever. Tissuren is our favorite. Uh, it's several floors of different fabrics. So you have fabrics for clothes, fabric for sofa, like, you know, whatever. 
it's a heaven for crafters like crafters artists like us i mean i will not like I, I i call it more an art what we do than craft but i know we are also categorized in this uh, field too it's just it's just that we are using our needles as a paintbrush that's what we do basically so you see i'm concentrating in the zone of where there will be a change of um, direction just for me to not focus too much on the lines and then i can connect the dots i will say connect the lines together hope that's really makes sense also talking about this paris uh, we are going soon to Paris back because it's been a very long time. I was not able to, to, we were not able to go to Paris. I miss a bit my hometown, miss my, yeah, friends, city, everything. So we'll go there. Um, and we were thinking of something is to actually do a course live in a place, you know, like where we could, I mean, I'm talking Paris because I know Paris like my heart, my, my pocket, you know, so I was thinking, to maybe around on the streets of Paris, showing you a bit the areas and maybe, yeah, how does a design start? How is the idea? How I take the pictures, then draw it, you know, could draw an embroider on spot. You know, we had an idea like this. So the fabric stores are all bunched together. Yeah, like this, I mean, you do have uh, different fabric stores in, um, in Paris, but in Montmartre, it's known to be uh, the fabric store area. But in Paris, it's a lot like this. I think it's the same. Like When I went to New York and stuff, like when you want to look uh, for something, you have areas for it. So, for example, in Paris, we have, if you want computers um, component, you will have just an area in, uh, in 12 arrondissement where you will find only that in a street, you know. Um, and this is the same in Montmartre. If you want to go for fabric, so a lot of people in... Uh, fashion, uh, interior design and stuff, they are going there, you know, and you can find any type of fabric from all around the world, like quite amazing designs. It's, um, it's fascinating. In a way, us, uh, we are quite boring in quote unquote is because we only look for plain fabric because as we are doing our embroidery on it. But um, if you look for different design patterns, everything, it's, it's endless, endless. <laughs> you can spend the whole uh, whole morning. I suppose Ellen will be able to spend the whole day if you bring her lunch to the thing. No, literally, it's uh, but it's uh, really nice. And the area, if you go down a bit after um, in the more calm areas, Rue des Martyrs, and go down to Notre Dame de Lorette, you you have very nice uh, cafe areas and stuff. So it's a really nice. Um, activity time you can spend in Paris to do. Also the architecture around is, is really nice. So you could definitely spot some buildings, some it's Montmartre is like countryside in Paris, so a bit countryside. Like it's a lot of houses that have been kept. A lot of artists lived there, like Picasso and 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 so many, you know. So it's a lot of houses and small buildings. A lot of in we did quite different design, I think, on it. We did Rue Poulbo. We did Sacré Coeur for um, our book, Mindful Embroidery. So yeah, no Montmartre is a nice place to to sketch, to uh, document with art, definitely. After I will show you how I'm uh, proceeding a circle shape that it makes it a bit less boring for you maybe to watch me doing this i will uh yeah, i can do this one okay or maybe i will just continue this one okay well it seems that my connection stabilized so i'm happy for that because i was a bit worried that it will not get well and i'm also happy that a black fabric is not because it's difficult for a camera sometimes with black fabric to uh, deal with the contrast and everything. But 
Is Montmartre near to Pompidou Center? No. No and yes. I mean, why I say yes and no? Because um, Paris is small. Um, but no, it's not, it's not very close. Pompidou is more, uh, it's much more center. It's uh, close by Léal, Châtelet. Uh, you're very close to the area called Les Marais, uh, which is uh, fourth, uh, very, uh, very nice area. If you want to see the oldest architecture of Paris, actually, it is in fourth. That's where you have a lot of buildings that have been kept before the movement of... Uh, uh, when they changed basically the architecture of Paris of Haussmann. Haussmann was an architect that uh, basically transformed Paris of what it is now. So that's where in, in so many areas, mostly, for example, if you go 8 Champs-Élysées, if you go um, 7, 16, 6 also, it's quite present, it, you see these buildings that are now iconic of Paris, but um, they were not originated like, like they, they were not like that before. And if you want to see the Paris of how it looks before this revolution of uh, architecture revolution, I would say, you have to go Les Marais. So yeah, anyway, uh, the point is, is it's not that, fa that close. Montmartre is more in North Paris. Uh, so yeah, I would say it's closer to Saint Lazare, for example. If you you could uh, see if you if you know, you have Madeleine. Then Madeleine, you I think you are, yeah, ten minutes away in metro from Montmartre, basically. So what I'm doing here is uh, usually the suns I make it unique you know by itself it's a shape and then you have a movement that goes around and as i don't want to do several like bowls or uh, several suns you know uh, like circles uh, that are separate uh, this is just basically an epicenter of um, of movements so that's why i keep it the same colors but there will be one i i don't know which one will be uh, completely separate to make this um, contrast, basically. And so the, s the, the closer to the center of my circle, the smaller my stitch will be. Because otherwise, it will uh, become square shapes, which you don't want. Also, I have an idea. I had an idea is that I would love to do a workshop with you guys. I don't know where and to record it, you know, to be so nice and then to, to um, basically stitch together and uh, to uh, s to share it to people who can't make it, you know, so to the academy and uh, like to have a, a main project together or something like that, like it will be nice. The, the only thing is that you need to think about that in advance because, you know, it's something you can, you have to prepare as it takes time with embroidery. So yeah, there are so many possibilities. Um, I will definitely talk about these things more in our um, forum now that we created for our members. Um, because it's, it's, yeah, we, I think we will launch like some main, like, um, common projects that we could go to go do together and yeah you know maybe propose it for a charity or something i don't know i have so many ideas but say it's it's actually hard to to make all of them so to make a sense of uh, the the shape the circle here i usually do one french knot so maybe i went too fast if you don't know how to do french knot you just need to hold the threads, put the needle behind, you see, you can do in front if you want, huh? it depends, it's uh, different uh, schools of that, one turn, sorry, I missed, one turn, two turn, I mean, how many turns you want, 
the more uh, you do turns, the less it's a French knot. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can do one, two turns, and then you have a circle, and it's, it starts to to be something. So let's do a complementary colors now. Let's see what I can do. I want also to be different on my my yellows and stuff like that. Let's take this ones. I started to really like the anchor threads. If I uh, if I am not mistaken, it's from Portugal. Uh, let me check if I see it here. No, made in Hungary. Sorry. Oh, okay. Wow, it's from Hungary. I thought it was from Portugal because we worked with Uncle Portugal. So, um, my bad. Anyway, their colors are very nice too. I love DMC, huh? don't get me wrong, but uh, Encore is very nice if you want, uh, mostly with the multicolor threads. I don't know if you can see it here. Yeah, it's multicolor. You see green, yellow, green. Um, why I like them is because the, the shades change much more, uh, much closer than uh, DMC. It's uh, much more spread, so you don't see the, the gradient as uh, fast. So yeah, that's my little trick. Anchor threads are very, very nice for that. We already an hour of the stream, so we will have some minutes left and then I will let you continue with your day or evening. But it was nice to have you. I'll definitely do more. I'm, I'm not finishing this piece, uh, this artwork anytime soon. So, um, we will uh, definitely uh, go back if you want to uh, on stream with this uh, artwork. But also, I, wi I will do different uh, streaming now. I think, um, you know, we we do YouTube videos and we I should do more YouTube videos. It's been a long time. I didn't post any, but it's because now I'm more drawn to do um, interaction content, which, yeah, is basically streaming. Uh, because I can see your comment, uh, talk with you, like I, I want to do more live uh, stuff. And I hope you would like it. Would you ever consider stitching with wool? Yeah, of course. Uh, I never thought about it. Um, I know Eileen do it. She uh, did, does it um, on uh, her sweatshirts, usually. She even did uh, a course on it. Uh, but definitely, I think you have also, um, yes, I actually, did I try in Sweden? I know that in Sweden they do that a lot, uh, sti uh, like stitching with wo wools. And actually, you right with uh, wool, with uh, this style will be very nice. So I'll definitely consider. Thank you, Linda. Have you used Saju Freds? Yes, I did. Yes, of course. It's really nice. They have a nice shop also. Um, we have them. Actually, yeah, I do have them there. Yeah, I do have them there, but I will not move because uh, it, um, it's really nice threads, really nice. And um, I forgot one uh, brand that is really nice also. Hmm. Oh, that's a blank. So yeah, you see, for uh, emphasizing my... Um, my uh, shapes, I will, um, and my zones, I will add some complementary color in a randomized way. And uh, let me, oh yeah, okay, it's my over threads there. That's why I'm getting disturbed. I will do then make a note. Sorry for the microphone noise. Oh, it gets a bit messy. It's because I'm not doing my notes. I don't want to annoy you seeing doing my notes on live, but I should do it actually because it creates... Um, massage threads are very good. I just wanted to advise another uh, brand that was very nice uh, of threads, but I completely it completely um, got out of my uh, head. I'm sorry. I'm really trying hard actually to find what what it is, but yeah. 
It's uh, also a brand from France. And they do uh, really, really nice, uh, mostly metallic. F like, I really love their metallic threads, golden threads and stuff. Uh, when I uh, did an event for Hermès with Eileen, um, I started to use them because to, to actually stitch on silk is very uh, delicate. And their threads was a savior compared to the MC. Hmm. Uh, I will keep that. I was a little late. What do you mean by zones? I will explain you. Welcome. Uh, I will explain you. I'm just trying to get where I put my... Ah, my needle is here. I got a thread. I lost it. Sorry for the noise of the microphone again. It's so close that uh, I'm doing the mistake of hitting it. So what I mean with zones, if you see, this yellow part is my zone. This blue, light blue, is my zone. So that's what I mean with zones, is that I establish basically areas where... Um, over soi. yes, thank you. Thank you, Elin. Over soi is a very good brand. Uh, so my zones are... Yeah, is basically where you see the colors, I, I establish zones and then I'm doing the base of it to advance a bit and to have this feeling of like um, my embroidery is advancing and then I go for the details, the complementary and stuff. Right now I'm doing just the complementary um, uh, colors of this just to show you an example of how it works. But typically I will be alone not recording, I will just do the bases. Hope that makes sense. What did you say these threads you are using is called Encore Friends. Encore, Encore, Encore. It's A N. Uh, let me check here. Let me zoom in. A N C H O R. Oh, but it's much better for you to actually see zoom. It's just that it might move uh, much more. I will use just one hand to um, hold my... Uh, Hello from Yorkshire. York Yorkshire. <laughs> with, <laughs> with French accent, it's impossible for me to say. Yorksh Yorkshire or something. Welcome. I would love I would live to love to hear you to discuss various cotton thread and their quality. While there are many brands, we are not so spoiled for choice, I think. Yeah, definitely. Maybe I should do a live stream about it. Where we could... Um, I will uh, unzoom because I think my camera is not liking the contrast here. Uh, we could definitely talk about it. Um, we have different brands we could, um, we could show you and uh, make you... a. Uh, some sort of review. So yeah, I'll, I'll definitely think about it. Thank you for the suggestion. Um, Sometimes we also forget uh, some ideas of what we could do. So when you propose things like this, it's perfect for us. Because, um, for me, it's, it's really easy to do. But it's true that we are um, missing choices. I think so, at least. Um, also, I'm, I'm in the same um, thinking as you. I think mostly on the internet, I would say. Because now for us, for example, in Montenegro, it's not like we have access to everything. Um, it's a bit more difficult to find uh, things that we were used to have in the sense, um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, you, we can't uh, receive package like, like we used to, you know, uh, as we are out of EU. But um, yeah. Uh, we need to basically, if we want to order something, the best is on internet. And uh, it's true that you don't have massive choice. Um, but yeah, DMC still remain my favorite um, because it's easy and I'm used to it. Um, Encore is uh, really nice also. It's a really nice alternative. The colors are very similar. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, 
It's like it's written like this, yeah. Encore. And sure, I don't know. You will say that in English. Uh, I d I'm just saying it French way right now. How we will say. So yeah, you see, I'm uh, basically uh, doing. So I'm doing a bit more for my uh, circle, but then I will do less in my um, movement because I don't want the yellow to take over the blue, if that makes sense. I just want to put some touch here and there to make it, uh, you know, nice and also a bit more poppy in the eyes. Also, I will use different complementary color for the light blue to not mix it too much. Again, I want, um, I need and I want to find a nice line in between blending colors, matching them, blending them, but still make it separated that we can see the different waves. And this is actually, I think, the trickiest part of uh, the job of doing this uh, type of abstract embroidery. If you have any question before uh, the end of the live, feel free to ask. Otherwise, I will be mostly uh, present on the, our social uh, media or our forum that is on Charles and Neil Academy, where, um, yeah, I really can't wait to share with you guys the different projects and um, to I will be able to put more pictures of the backstage and also you can find me there definitely. It's uh, I'm very excited about it. I appreciate that. If you can include silk thread in your discussion, I would love that. Do you like to blend colors or do you prefer varieded threads? My favorite is uh, multicolor threads, yeah, varieded uh, threads. But um, I I don't overdo it in this specific um, artworks because um, otherwise it becomes too much, you know. So I do use in majority, except for this one, um, unique threads that I blend together. And yeah, definitely about silk threads. Um, uh, it's a it's a very good idea. We will definitely do it. Thank you for the suggestion. Thank you. I think I will do uh, this comparison in this uh, type uh, of either live stream or I could pre-record, but it will be exactly in the same uh, setup and maybe um, do a stitch here and there. So the little trick to make it a bit um, harmonious, I will not say, but but you can see that things has been work is when you put a touch of something somewhere. So for example, I told you that I would put another complementary color on my light blue, but I'll just put one touch or maybe two of uh, the yellow, just because it's here, you know? It's these little details that sometimes change everything in art, artwork. Think details. You know, do the base and then think small details and your future viewers, buyers, whatever, they will notice it and they'll love it. Thank you for showing this abstract. I hope you show the finished piece when I finish piece. Sorry, whenever it's done, I know it may be a month from now. I will definitely. I might do another stream where it's more advanced to to maybe share more when I did all the base and other complementary colors. But definitely, I will share it. It may take me uh, some months. Yeah, I don't know how long because I. I mean, as we do that for a living, obviously I, I'm stitching a bit faster, but um, it will take time. It definitely take time. But thank you for uh, coming. Really, thank you for coming, Denise. It was nice. And I'm almost done with this thread. So that's basically how this will be. Let's unzoom a bit. 
so yeah this is just a small part for yeah of the big uh, big uh, art work and i wanted you to see at least the beginning i suppose i will do another stream when uh, basically um it will be uh, more uh, more advanced uh, in my work joanna i don't know something must have happened i saw that you put a message but Message retract. Yeah, I don't know. There must have been uh, some sort of uh, bug or anything. So yeah, I will come back. I will definitely uh, keep you in touch in our, our academy. So if you want to have a look and you want to support our work, uh, it will definitely be great. We will be definitely grateful. Uh, you have you have de many many courses where you can find basically what you want to learn: architecture, create your own design, anything basically anything um, and we are basically making course every time new so right now for example we have this sashiko embroidery that i see here let me catch it it's a part of it i don't know if i'm allowed to show this but here you go i'm doing it elin sorry this type of embroidery sashiko so this is one of the new course we do several workshops uh, frequently. Uh, we will do even more now. It's just um, we were doing... Oh, here's another one. Okay, not too long. <laughs> Sorry if I spoiled the, the thing, Elin. Um, yeah, we constantly do several. Um, maybe I will turn this as a course uh, for the abstract. I don't know yet. But basically, we are sharing constant content every month. And that's why we made it as a membership, because for us it was difficult to actually tell you, oh, there is this new course and this new course. Of course, if you want one course uniquely, you can just take it uniquely. Um, but we thought that the membership should be basically uh, a bouquet of uh, uh, different things that can maybe inspire you to do something that you were not su expecting to do. Uh, that's really it. And now we have this forum where we can socialize and share together. Anyway, uh, on to that. I was very happy to have you on the stream. I will see you soon. I definitely will do other streams more uh, start September. We will be in France, but I'll be able to record. Uh, there is no problem. Um, but in any way, start September, I want to have a more frequent agenda and schedule about streaming. So we will definitely uh, see each other again. Thank you again. Have a good weekend and happy Thing.